Cool. Join me right now is UFC Bantamweight, Matt Schnell. What's going on, Matt? How you doing? Thanks for having me. No doubt, no doubt. Uh, the first thing I want to get into is a video that surfaced earlier this year of you being mugged in New York City. Can you talk about that experience? <laughs> I can't talk about that experience. It's funny that you say that. I'm actually here with this the goofball right now, the culprit. He's lucky I didn't press charges. I didn't know that. This goofball, Adam Antolin. I totally. What's going I totally on? Hey, though. The the good the the thing he's really fortunate uh, about is that the the rest of the videos weren't leaked because they were a little too brutal. There was just too much of a whipping involved. And uh, <laughs> fortunately for him, I didn't leak those. You know, I didn't want him to look that bad. I wanted it to look somewhat competitive. So yeah. Yeah, but I made it. I survived. I'm okay. He's the battered one. <laughs> Maybe you could release those after you guys' careers are over, you know, to TMZ or something. Yeah, yeah, maybe so. He made me already sign a non-release form, though. He got his lawyers on it quick. It was, uh, <laughs> it was a big to-do, actually. Well, you entered the UFC with Tough 24, you know, Tournament of the Champions. A few years later, the flyweight division is in limbo. Did you ever think this would be a possibility when you entered the UFC? I think I think we even had the conversation on the show that maybe it was a possibility. We, we felt very much throughout the season that maybe it was one of the last-ditch efforts for them to save the division. And then, you know, we, we thought that it was curious afterwards that they didn't sign more of the guys. It was obviously a very talented, very competitive season, and there's a lot of guys out there who have obviously went on and, and continued their careers and been very successful so, uh, yeah, I mean, it, it's something I think I think we all knew that it was a possibility. No, no, people can act like this snuck up on them, but let's let's be serious. Your most recent appearance in the Octagon was at UFC Singapore. You got a win over a Japanese submission artist. Anyway, did you expect a striking battle against that guy? Because that guy, like I said, he's a submission artist. He has a lot of submissions on his record. Yeah, you know, I uh, well-rounded kid, though that uh, came from kind of a striking background and no I mean we did we didn't think we'd strike that much we we grappled a lot throughout the training camp uh, and and yeah he, he surprised us um, but he was good we were able to make adjustments in the fights and in uh, through the fight and uh, pick up the win it was a close one though and that kid's kid's really good I think uh, one of the more talented guys I've stood in front of and he, he was big and long and fast and uh it was it was a good experience it was nice to come away with the win is there an underlying satisfaction of giving someone their first loss uh man i don't know i i guess kind of if i'm if i'm being honest but you know i've never had a long undefeated run my myself i've uh, as an amateur i won my first two fights and i lost my third as a pro i won my first two fights and i lost my third so um I, I've just never really th thought of records much, you know. I'm I'm going into a fist fight, and uh, I like my chances. So, yeah, I I don't know. I don't think about it much. But yeah, when when somebody says it to you, is it satisfying that you gave him his first loss? I'm sure someday we'll look down the line, and that kid's gonna win a lot of fights, and be like, yeah, I beat him. <laughs> <laughs> well, you flew all the way across the world, and you performed in front of an Asian crowd. How different was that from fighting in stateside? You know, honestly, it wasn't much different. Um, the the fans were were uh, very very nice and well receiving, and they cheered loud. And uh, it it was it was it was a similar experience, I would say. Like I did expect something way different, but not really, not really. You know, it was it was nice. I mean, I guess we didn't get booed, but I think uh, I think our fight was pretty competitive. But you know. If, and if you're in the U.S. sometimes, you'll get booed just for not, I don't know, you know how it is. Yeah. Well, Asians are not big into booing, to be honest with you. So right. I guess it's a good thing. Yeah. I, I saw your calling from Seoul, Korea. I'm actually part Korean. My grand, uh, my father was born in Seoul, actually. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, that, have you ever been out to Korea? I haven't. I would like to. Maybe the next UFC I'll get to fight in Korea. Yeah, I'm hearing that they're putting a card together later this year in Seoul, so maybe I'll see you here. Good good shot, I'll be on that. Hopefully, we'll see. Alright, well, that last fight was about eight months ago. It's a pretty long layoff. What was going on during that period? 
you know, I stay in the gym. I'm always training. Uh, I, I married my wife uh, last April and shortly fought that fight. So I've just uh, been married and, and trying to uh, trying to settle in at home. And, uh, you know, I travel around Houston. I train all over the place. Shout out to everybody who has me in Houston. I, I really appreciate it. I kind of bounce around to a bunch of different gyms and work with, with a, uh, a lot of guys. And uh, I went out to Henry Cejudo's camp. I helped him get ready for TJ Dillashaw. So I was out there for a three-week period, and then I went back out there for another three-week period. Uh, Christmas there in between, went home and spent with my wife. So, uh, But, yeah, got got through that camp with Henry and was in New York. Got to watch him get the win, and that was great. Uh, And, yeah, then got an offer to fight uh, Louis Smolka in Wichita. So here we are. Going back to that TJ Dillashaw fight, did you expect such a quick finish? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't. I didn't. Uh, I, th- I thought it was going to be a good fight. I really, I saw Henry wearing on TJ a little bit. You know, I, I knew that, uh, I-, I questioned how how durable TJ would be, you know, the-, the weight cut. I know, I'm a big flyweight. I've had a bad cut and gone in there and not been as durable. So I, I just know how this stuff affects you and, yeah, yeah, it's just 10 pounds. And it's not just about making the weight, but, like, how long, how how much time was he spending uh, making sure that everything was right so that he could make the weight? And, and that time he was spending doing that, it was time he wasn't spending doing things he could enjoy, spend time with his family, training uh, on specific things, what have you. So I thought that was interesting. I also thought it was curious afterwards, looking back, uh, I don't think TJ had one flyweight in his stable And, uh, you know, obviously TJ had his fair share of things to say about the division and uh, some insensitive things that I that I was a little I was somewhat outspoken about. And uh, so it was it was just interesting to see. And I I really felt like TJ uh, came into this thing with absolutely no respect for uh, for Henry and and, uh, definitely not for the division. And it showed through his actions, through the buildup. And then obviously, you know, looking back. How many flyweights was he training with? That was a mistake. Maybe he'll remedy that uh, in the rematch. I would suggest it. Do you think that he's really bitter right now? Because he's going around doing this kind of media tour after he lost, you know, saying that, you know, making excuses in a way. What do you? Th- what are your thoughts on that? Um, I, I, think it's, uh, I think it's really unbecoming. And, you know... It, it, it's I, I want to give this guy the benefit of the doubt, but yeah, that's I don't I don't want to talk too much on it, but yeah, it's very unbecoming. He he should uh, hold himself to a higher standard. We 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 all know what's at risk when we walk in there. You know, you win, you lose. I've lost to guys that I think I'm way better than. I've beaten guys that are probably way better than me. You know, and it's just how it shakes out sometimes. If you're a competitor, a true competitor, and not just a guy who likes to win. Uh, then, then you know how to deal with this. But yeah, I, I don't know. There's more. There's more than meets the eye, in in that uh, scenario. I'm not sure what's going on there. It is kind of strange, though. You're riding into this fight at UFC Wichita versus Smoka on a two fight winning streak over decent competition. Was Smoka the type of opponent you wanted next as the next step? I I mean, it's an exciting fight for me. Lewis Smoka has been around for a long time. I've got a lot of respect for the guy. Uh, he's, he's fought everybody in the flyweight division. Uh, part of me still hopes that, uh, we're still thinking about flyweights. I, and, and it just so happens I'm fighting Lewis at Bantamweight this, this fight. I'm not sure what's happening moving forward, but I am kind of holding on to that thought a little bit. Uh, so Lewis is, is a, you know, he's a, he's a guy who's relevant in the flyweight division always has been. So it's a big fight. Yeah, it's exactly what I wanted were you surprised that he, I don't know if he called you out or he said his manager called you out directly? Were you surprised by that? Yeah, I thought it was funny. I I, I actually came across that video recently, uh, and I, I didn't even know it, it existed. And I thought it was funny. He was like, yeah, so I'm calling out Matt Schnell because uh, my manager <laughs> said that was a good one. And uh, I, I thought it was funny. Yeah, yeah, good on him. I, I, it's a good fight, you know. The thing is, that what, what's funny about the whole call-out thing is, like, I can call anybody out. It doesn't mean anything. I've answered call-outs on Twitter. It doesn't get me the fight, you know. Like, what, what do you do? What do you do? 
So it just so happened it came together. Uh, I'm I'm looking forward to it. I think it's I think it's a fun fight, and uh, hopefully people tune in and and uh, it it'll be a good one between me and this guy. I think we match up stylistically very well, very uh, very similar in a lot of ways, and uh, he likes to go out and scrap, and so do I. So I'm yeah looking forward to it. See see y'all in Wichita. Did you get to check out his fight, his return to the UFC in China? Yeah, yeah. I threw it on the TV not too long ago. Sure, he looked he looked good. He did exactly what I would have done. I actually got offered that fight. They offered it to me like on 10 days notice or something. Lewis probably got it after I did. Uh, I, I didn't think that I was in a good spot to travel to China and fight at Bantamweight. I was kind of coming off of a little... I tweaked my knee a little bit and wasn't training as much and didn't feel super confident. But, uh, you know, really, really considered it. Like, went and sparred hard one day and was like, you know what, I'm probably good. I can fight I can fight three, three minute, three, five minute rounds. I'd get through it. And I think I can go take this. Kind of went back and forth on it and, and ultimately didn't take it. And I think Lewis did exactly what I was planning on doing, <laughs> just going in there, die, take him down. I knew, we, you know, Looking at the film, looking at looking at the guy's record, he's a white belt. So uh, Lewis did the right thing, go in and grapple the kid and, and submit him, and that's what I had planned. So it's hard to it's hard to look at that fight and get a great gauge of what he's going to come and try to do to me, because I, I'm I'm obviously a different um, a different fight. But yeah, it was uh, I thought it was a good performance overall, and uh, that's like I said, that's exactly what I would have done. That's what I would have done too. What differences do you see in yourself as a bantamweight compared to being in a flyweight? I'm probably carrying an extra eight pounds or so, um, and I think I would always carry that weight if I if I wasn't cutting to flyweight because obviously it's a it's a complex cut. Um, but I don't know, not much difference. It's going to be the same pace. I'm going to move exactly the same speed. My, my idea is not to uh, bulk up and put as much weight as I possibly can on. I'm just kind of, kind of, ride out with how I am, and hopefully, if if they decide to get rid of the division or, or what have you, uh, then then I'll grow into the weight class over the next couple of years because, you know, I'm 29 now. I, I've been making flyweight since I was 20 years old. If we're being honest, I'd be a I'd be a 170 pound man right now if I wasn't fighting MMA. So. I, I can grow into the weight class if I allow myself to and, and do the right things and uh, hopefully hopefully get with a, a trainer that's willing to work with me and we'll, we'll do the right thing and put the weight on over time. But, yeah, you're not going to see a beefier Matt Schnell uh, March 9th. It's uh, going to be the same old guy. I'm, I'm walking about the same weight I do uh, a couple, couple months out from a flyweight fight too, so. You're out in California getting ready for this fight. Who have you been working with out there? Um, we got a good little crew at Combat Sports Academy. Um, obviously, Adam Antolin get, getting work with him. There's uh, some good guys at AKA. I, I like to grab a hold of a kid named Mark Clamaco. Mark Clamaco. Yeah. He's, uh, he's a, a stud. There, there's a bunch of guys around here. Uh, Gaston Bolanos, Darren, uh, my coach Darren Wayonyama, um, Coach Kirian, uh, and, and yeah, there's there's a, a crew of guys that we work with on a daily basis. So it's been good work between those two uh, between those two camps. I also saw that you were working with NeuroForce One, Henry Suhudo. He's a big advocate of that. Tell tell me about working with them. Yeah, I mean it was. Uh, it was nice. They, they've got a great facility and uh, a staff of, of guys who are, are really educated. So uh, it was it was good. It was it was good. And I thought uh, I thought they kept Henry on a good regimen. And it's, it's just good to have somebody that that knows better than you do really in, in those situations. And that's what it was. Henry Henry turns over uh, the workouts and and uh, his uh, you know how he's feeling physically and and uh, his recovery over to those guys. They kind of they kind of take the reins with everything and take care of him. So, yeah, it's it's a nice thing. I understand why it works out so well for Henry. Uh, we've talked about working to, together as well. I'd have to get back out to Arizona, uh, w which is also an option. I, I worked with those guys 
throughout this whole camp. Henry's got a good little crew out there, uh, a, a good a good bunch too. So yeah, it was good. Neuroforce won. Uh, it was pretty cool. Everything goes as planned on March 9th. What do you see yourself doing for the rest of the year? Mm. I'd like to be a little more active this year. Um, but, yeah, I, I would like to know what's what's going on with the landscape of my division. You know, am, am I going to be a Bantamweight? If so, then let's let's move forward and and fight some Bantamweights, I guess. Uh, you know, the, the thing about the Lewis Smolka fight is, is Lewis Smolka is a flyweight. We're both flyweights. And it's nice because neither one of us really have to cut weight and we'll kind of walk in there at, at what we weigh. And that that's that's cool. But, uh, you know, if I'm going to fight a Bantamweight, then I need to start taking out Bantamweights, I suppose. Well, we could catch you on March 9th. ES that's uh, right. UFC on ESPN Plus 4 in Wichita, Kansas. Thank you for your time, Matt, and uh, good luck to you. Yeah, thank you very much. I appreciate you guys having me.